So now that you've taken a look at getting rid of evidence on attacked systems like Windows XP, intrusion detection systems are certainly next up. And intrusion detection systems are designed pretty much from the outset to watch for bad behavior and then scream and yell as loud as they possibly can the moment an attack occurs. So if it's screaming and yelling from the moment an attack occurs, if you set it off, you're probably going to bring down administrative scrutiny. You do not want to do this. Therefore, rather than worrying about covering tracks on intrusion detection systems, the best approach is simply to avoid them entirely. Avoiding intrusion detection systems, while that might sound nearly impossible because they're designed to watch exactly for what you're probably doing, they typically watch for patterns, large amounts of bandwidth being consumed, uh, certain packets like ping of death, uh, sin flood attacks, and so forth. So intrusion detection systems are actually relatively easy to avoid setting off because they have a threshold for, for watching for bad things that are happening. As long as you remain under that threshold, you're fine. Or if your attack begins from inside the network, typically also intrusion detection systems will not start clamoring for attention. So for intrusion detection system avoidance, it's actually pretty much straightforward. Keep your attack quiet. Keep your attack slow, as you've learned already during the attack phase itself, and ensure that if you're going to perform some kind of denial of service attack, some kind of really obvious bandwidth consuming attack of any type or, or sin flood, anything like that that's visible on the network, keep that for towards the end. Do not have that be one of your first attacks. It's a bad thing because you don't want to spoil the entire approach at the very beginning. If you have to set off bells, make sure you set them off at the very end of the attack when there's no other opportunities. Firewalls are another one of those nasty bits that we want to avoid as much as possible because they are designed to report logs of suspicious activity. They capture all of that traffic, all of that information, and retain it. They're designed to be resistant to these kinds of attacks, and if they're not resistant, they're designed to preserve evidence. So again, similar to an intrusion detection system, avoiding leaving any kind of evidence is certainly the best way to continue your attack and not set off any alarms and not leave any evidence. Attacking through a VPN tunnel is a common technique for avoiding firewalls, because if you're going through a VPN tunnel, the firewall probably can't look at what's going on in there, probably doesn't see the attack. The attack is simply passing through it in a, in a transparent way. But the, the VPN can't be examined closely, so the firewall can't see what's going on. That does depend pretty heavily on what kind of firewall and, and where the VPN terminates. But by and large, the general practice is attacking through a VPN tunnel is going to be safer than attacking a firewall itself or trying to attack through a firewall without some kind of tunnel. Going around the firewall typically is much, much better, whether it's physically attacking the network by connecting to the network, whether it's getting on wireless and attacking the network that way from behind the firewall, whether it's attacking a host in another way and having the, the host carry the attack through, around the firewall or beyond the firewall. Those are typically the most effective solutions because instead of worrying about setting off the firewall alarm or leaving evidence, you're simply not touching the firewall. You're avoiding it entirely. And then Another option is attacking a DMZ host, a host that's considered safe, a bastion host, if you will. Bastion hosts usually are really hardened against our attacks, so they're harder to compromise. But because they're harder to compromise and because they're actually defended, many administrators make a hole for them in the firewall. They do not consider anything from a bastion host or a DMZ host to actually be a threat because they consider that system cannot be compromised. So if you can compromise it, it's almost a safe harbor into the rest of the network without being detected. The rule of thumb for honeypots is stay the heck away from them. They are the absolute worst to run into. If you see a system on the network that says whack whack, the, the system name is whack whack secrets are here or whack whack private content do not disturb or whack whack executive server stay away from those really really tempting honeypots 
because the moment you touch them, they're going to start screaming and yelling, and they're probably going to do it in a way that you can't tell. They're probably going to alert administrators, but instead of shutting down your attack, they're going to continue to give you tempting stuff while the administrators look for the source of the attack, while they identify the network path, while they determine your source and potentially catch you red-handed. These are the absolute opposite of what you want to run into. So if it's too good to be true, it probably is not true. Stay away from honeypots at all costs. Again, leave them to the very end if you know that you have to touch them or if you can't quite tell because they're tempting but not too tempting, then leave them towards the end. Do not attack them early on or have someone else attack them for you. Another way to avoid honeypots would be to look for traffic patterns. Look for other users, legitimate users that are actually using the network properly. So, for example, in the WACWAC -WAC executive server scenario, if you've got a server out there called WACWAC -WAC executive server, but you notice that when you compromise executive accounts and systems, none of them actually access that server, that's probably a honeypot because it's almost by definition intended to be used by these executives called executive server, but they're not touching it. So they probably know something you don't, which is don't touch that server because it's an alarm system. Log collection systems, as I said earlier, are kind of designed in, in two ways. They're designed to collect events, system logs, security logs, administrative logs, uh, maintenance logs, and so forth, roll those all up and then generate typically reports or sometimes alerts. They're not always for security. They're not usually used as intrusion detection or prevention systems or even as honeypots. They can be used that way, and I have seen them used that way, but they're more typically for normal administration, normal network control and management. Because they're usually used for normal network control and only used for security as kind of an afterthought, they were usually pretty easy to compromise. These are typically run on commodity server operating systems like Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2003, things like that, which means you can typically use authorized credentials, either a network administrator, domain administrator, or in many cases, even just a regular domain user to connect up to these and actually empty out the logs. The techniques for that are pretty similar to the ones that you saw for Windows XP, except just extending that to be server uh, and collection service. It will depend pretty heavily on which service is being used to collect the logs. So uh, the, the actual steps will vary, but the overall idea is to remember that if there's a log collection system in place, typically speaking, you'll be able to connect up to it and purge it out because it's not designed to be highly secure or be a one-way trap for evidence.